Hello everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect 1 Legendary Edition where I've been playing since like noon today with only a brief break <laughs> to go to the bookstore and my neck hurts but this is I just want to keep like I can't I'm like oh I'll just play a little bit more like right now I'm telling myself I'm only gonna run around and talk to my companions oh wait first joker always joker first I just wanna, I just wanna chat with everyone. Then I'm like, oh yeah, I gotta make sure to go talk to Conrad Werner at the Citadel. Uh, <laughs> there's so many things to Why do. Why am I glad to be off of Novaria? I don't know which was worse, the cold or the corporations. One will freeze your balls off, the other will sell them out from under you. With all due respect, man. <laughs> <laughs> with all due respect. I have to go. <laughs> Bye. <right>, see ya. <laughs> ah, Joker. <laughs> Freeze them off and sell them out from underneath. Yeah. Oh boy. I'm glad they put people in here. Like, it would be so empty if there weren't people here. Like, other people. I think there's some people down here, right? Yeah, they're just chilling. Just a couple people. It's still not quite enough, and at least they're moving around. It's, I don't know. There should be more people than this in this ship. Hi! <laughs> we haven't had time together since our last chat. A lot was said. We talked. Yeah, okay. Oh, oh my gosh! <laughs> it's good. It's fine. You seemed decisive then, Lieutenant. Why so hesitant now? I don't want to distract you too much. Hey man, the deeper we get into this mess, that's my call. Seems. Don't put it on me. I'm just looking for an ear. That a briefing wasn't the right place to say how ridiculous this is. Seems like every other race in the galaxy is wrapped up in their own problems. They don't want to see what's coming. He just jumped immediately into freaking business. Like I was like, "What are you talking about? You you were so decisive when we flirted last time." He's like, "Business, business." Anyway, he's like, "I don't want to distract you." I'm like, "Don't put it on me. Don't make it about like don't make it my, like like an issue with me, you know? It's not an issue with me. It's you." Like, I mean, he may truly think that, you know, but it's like I'm the commander. I am Shepard. Like, I will I will take care of myself. Like, I am the commanding officer. I hopefully he trusts me enough to like be able to be responsible. To be able to put aside like personal things, like when I need to, and like handle myself and the crew, just fine, you know. So don't e don't even with me on that, Caden. But so can I guess this will add to your resentment against aliens? what? Resentment against aliens? Where did that? <laughs> what makes you think that? Where did that come? <laughs> I should never. I I, sh I should have learned this last time. Anyway. Oh, now I have to redo this again. <laughs> Never take anything that's not the upper option. I think you carry a grudge over the crap you took from Vernus. Before I met Vernus, I knew as much as any other civilian. Aliens were weird, superior, and tried to tell us what to do. I mean, it's only been 26 years since first contact. It's not a lot of time to understand them. It was Vernus who made me see how human aliens are. They're not different or special. They're jerks and saints, just like us. Hell, by the time I got payback, I didn't even want it anymore. I don't see you snapping very easily. What finally did it? He hurt Rana, broke her arm. She reached for a glass of water instead of pulling it biotically. She just wanted a drink without getting a nosebleed, you know? Like an idiot, I stood up. Didn't know what I was gonna do, just something. And Vernus lost it. Beat the crap out of me. He kept shouting how they should have bombed us back to the Stone Age. And that's when the knife came up. A military issue talon. Right in my face. I cut loose. Full biotic kick right in the teeth. Almost as strong as I can manage now. At 17, that's something. Uh, yeah. No. Like, what is he... Like, they got, they got an actual psycho to, like, try to train these kids. And then we're like, oh yeah, it's totally normal because they had no idea. Partially. But like, also, like, how could you look like, especially if your death rate is as high as it as it was, like, even just one kid dying in this scenario, I would think you need to reevaluate. You know what I mean? But you wanted to help a girl you cared for. That's a noble thing. Maybe my intentions were noble, but I 
I lost control. I killed him, Shepard. Snapped his neck. They probably could have saved him if they got him to an infirmary quick enough. But they didn't. Because nobody liked him. Stir when they shipped him home, bot training was shut down. Kinetics folded a couple of years later. That's funny. I'm not sure which of us got the worst of what happened. I mean, Verna's is dead. <laughs> yeah. Was Rana all right? Rana? Yeah. Yeah, she was fine. We never really, uh... We stopped talking after that. Tell me what happened. Rana had a gentle heart. She loved everyone. Vernus terrified her. We all protected her from him. Everyone, everyone loved her. Mm. But after what I did to him, she was terrified of me too. Anyway, this is, um, I had a point here. Aliens are individuals. Just because one's an ass doesn't mean they all are. Yeah, totally. So, yeah, I hated that Turian. But, but he wasn't a Turian to me. He was Vernus. I do need to go back and fix this argument because the whole tone, or not the argument, but the whole tone from the beginning has been messed up for me now, but, um, no, yeah, this is one of the reasons I really like Caden, right, is he looks at the things that have happened to him, like, in the past and in recent times, and, like, he doesn't, he doesn't just knee-jerk react to a lot, like, he does, he's not human, he's, or he's not perfect, right, so he does, I'm sure, to some things, but, like, you know, I like that he's, like, you know, I looked at a very traumatic event, for myself and I have been able to work through it and past it and recognize something about the wider world and myself at the same time you know and it takes a long time to come to that realization so that's why you're so self-controlled I'm no more disciplined than any other biotic shepherd this is all ancient history I'm over it I think it doesn't it does change you though like where like you that sort of a thing would control at least like it would influence you potentially subconsciously, like especially considering the biotics thing, you know? And then that could leak into like your everyday life. So I think he's he's fairly controlled when it comes to like relationships, um, decisions. Like he doesn't, that's why he doesn't like, he doesn't like to make rash decisions. He likes to think things through, you know? Um, so that it does explain, it, even if he doesn't realize it, it does explain a lot about him. You agonize over doing the right thing and you oh, hey. yourself lose control. Because Ron has spurned you after Vernon. She said it way better than I did. That's all, all right. Maybe you have a point. Maybe. But I'm okay. You don't have to worry about me. Fully functional human being. I won't be a burden on you. On the crew. <laughs> don't know. Kate, you're a strong man. Talking about this doesn't make you a whiner and it doesn't make you immature. It makes you <laughs> That's so healthy. Right. But it's embarrassing you had to tell me that. <laughs> you're right. I might need to loosen up a little. I'll try. Glad you'll be here when it's over, Shepard. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to some shore leave. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, he's so cute. Uh. Just trying to get a sense of where the crew's at. Oh wait, that's the thoughts. That's the one. I've wasted yeah. enough of your time for now, Commander. Uh, we'll have time for personal debriefings later. What's your opinion on the last mission? Killing Saren's, uh, what was Benezzi anyway? Second in command? Advisor? Anyway, it should set him back a bit. I'm sure Dr. Tassoni's hurting, though. Poor kid. Having to kill her own mom. Yeah, no. Uh, we're gonna have definitely have a talk with that. But, like I said before, I don't know. Their, their whole thing... Maybe in a movie it would have been maybe more dramatic and more touchy-feely, but video games don't really do touchy feely because it's the whole touching thing is like getting two models to like like meshes to like interact without it looking weird is weird like they, it's, it's really difficult to do so i could see why it wasn't touchy feely but it was a little bit like i don't know she seemed to like give up too quickly like uh, like liara did and so did her mom like i don't know it was just this and like i don't know like they loved each other obviously but they haven't talked in seven years like they didn't say anything about that and like i don't i don't know what am I supposed to say? You're evil? It's like, you didn't know she was evil until like three out. Okay, like three months ago or something. Any opinion on the rack knife? Off the record, if we had the option, I'd as soon have left it to the council. Ah, we yeah. During the rack knife war, I'm not sure we have any business getting involved. Mm, that's a fair point, but we know what the council would have done. 
But at the same time, like if it if it had just been the council, that we probably probably would have eradicated him. But do they really want to do like a complete genocide again? You know, like I don't know. I'm a specter. I made my decision. We'll talk later, Caden. I'd like that. I'd like that. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna reload, and I'll be back after I've not horribly accused my space husband of racism. <laughs> like, which is that's not what I was going for at all. Why are the middle options so aggressive when it comes to Caden? I was trying to like have a little more nuance, you know, like not just doing like the the upper paragony ones all the time. I try to do the middle ones every now and then for a little more nuance, but that was not nuance. That was just anger or like accusation, you know. Beep beep. You can't skip this fun uh, fun fact. We haven't had time together since our last chat. Uh huh. Said. You seem decisive then. I time. don't want to distract you. I'm just looking for. Seems like every other race in the galaxy is wrapped up in their own problems. They don't want to see what's coming. Uh, I think this one. No, we're just wanting to believe everything will be fine. Sounds like human nature to me. That was. <sighs> yeah, I guess yeah. some things I... cross species well enough. I should remember that after what happened with Furnace. Okay, that changes things again. Dang, freaking everything's changing. Hey, now I'm, now I gotta go back and check again. That would be interesting. I think you carry a grudge over the crap you took from Vernus. Before I met Vernus, I knew as much. Okay, as well, person, that did change it. On the okay. <laughs> this is just so great. Like, yeah. let men have emotions. Make you... All right, I was gonna reload, and like, I don't. I, there was like a route that I thought I had taken that I guess I can't quite remember if I did or not because it just did the whole accusation thing really fast, but really fast I have to go back up and talk to Joker because in that save file where I reloaded, mm. I didn't go talk to Joker. So, like, in the one. But I did just, I just kept the one that you guys just saw where I did do the Paragon-ish, you know, the upper uh, bracket option. And it was way less accusatory. <laughs> and it did change the conversation options. Uh, like, it seemed like it, it changed the tone significantly, you know, so. Where are we at? Oh, we're getting there. Getting there. Getting there. Never, never gonna get those. Oh, never gonna get those. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry, Turian writings we'll get, but... Everything else is gonna take eons. Oh, by the way, I do have... I don't know if I mentioned this, but I do have Liara's uh, five mission achievement. Uh, I still need to get the achievement. Uh, there's an achievement for using Singularity 25 times. And Neural Shock, which Caden and Liara, respectively, are the only ones with those. So I had to take those guys out. Plus uh, Ashley and... Who else? Garrus. Alright, Liara. Let's chat. If you are here to talk about Benezia's death, you need not bother. She brought it upon herself. Don't pretend it doesn't bother you. She was your mother. She was. But she was not. I prefer to remember Benezia as she used to be. Before she was corrupted by Sovereign's power. The best of your mother lives on in you. Her determination, her intelligence, her strength. That is kind of you to say. I appreciate your concern, but I am fine. Benezia chose her path, just as I have chosen mine. I am with See, you until the end, Shepard. this is the thing, right? Like, I get that maybe she's had, like, a, a sit-down talk with herself about it. But, like, I also just feel like it's just too quick. Like, she doesn't have to, like, be, like, crying all over the place or anything. But, like, she's just, she, all she keeps saying, and it could be, like, a diversionary tactic, right? Where she's like, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. But it's also just, like, I don't know, it's a video game, right? Where it's, like, I want to be involved in, like, my friends and, like, helping them and stuff. And... It's just, it's a little bit, it's a little bit very abrupt, in my opinion. I don't, the way this was handled was weird. I like talking with you, Liara. No matter what the subject. After you, we talk. Then let us talk about you. What? Are you okay? I'm not sleeping well. The visions keep me up at See, night. See, I'm being honest. I wish there was something I could do to help you. You need to be at your best, Commander. The crew relies on you for leadership. It can be a heavy burden. I can handle the responsibility of command, but if I don't stop Saren, the entire galaxy gets wiped out. 
I'm sorry, Commander. The last thing you need is someone constantly reminding you of how grim things are. Is there anything else you would rather talk about? I just don't- I don't seem to do well in conversations with Liara. I should go. Goodbye, Commander. I don't know, maybe I uh, maybe maybe I'm just like taking the wrong routes with her, but I just don't I don't I feel like I mess up all the time. What was that? Yes, Commander? Is there something you need? It would be funny to talk about Caden and be I like should go. she'd be Goodbye, like Commander. You'd know more than me, hey 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 and I'd be like shut up. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I feel like everything's always so quick with Liara. Abrupt. Like, I don't have as long conversations with her as I do with Caden or Ashley, you know? What do you want, Shepard? Personal inquiry. Why did you become a mercenary? Lots of reasons. Such as? Such as, I needed to get out of our system. I needed to eat. I needed to survive. Why not stay and help your people? I tried to help. That's why I had to leave. What happened? I was betrayed. I was head of a small tribe. We were trying to restore order after the war, but the other tribes were against us. They followed Jared, one of the few warlords who survived the war with the Turians. But he was old, and so were his ideas. He wanted to continue the war. He wanted us to fight. Turians, Salarians, each other. It didn't matter who, as long as we were fighting. I mean, that's just exhausting to think about, right? But, like, especially when you don't feel like you don't have anything else to live for, I guess. Like, besides fighting, like, because... <sighs> I don't know. There's just the the Krogan psychology is a, is really interesting, honestly. What did you want? I just wanted Jared to shut. <laughs> I just wanted to shut up. His ranting. I wanted him to stop leading the tribes astray. But he couldn't understand how much things had changed. We didn't have the numbers to go. Right, here. right. Even if we it's did, just practical considerations the general page made sure we couldn't replenish our numbers fast enough. I told them all to forget about war. We needed to focus on breeding, at least for one generation. And for a while, we were getting through. I mean, some of the tribes it's not a, started coming around. It's not a bad trade-off. Hey, let's stop killing each other and just get laid. <laughs> like you know. <laughs> It's like, I don't, I don't see why that would be like such a terrible trade-off, but alas. Jared apparently doesn't like that sort of thing. I take it the warlord didn't appreciate that. No, he didn't. He arranged a crush with the tribes, a meeting on neutral ground. He wanted to talk. We met at the Hollows. Near the graves of our ancestors. The skulls of our dead laid bare to remind us where we come from and where we all go. It's as sacred as any Krogan place can be. Violence is forbidden. Sounds like a trap to me. You must have suspected as much. I did. But when your father invites you to a crush, well, there are some laws that even we hold sacred. Oh, snap. Jared was your father? He was. Until that day. We talked. But we didn't get anywhere. When it was clear that I wouldn't join him, he gave the signal. His men leapt from the graves of our ancestors like Krogan undead. The few that were loyal to me died quickly. I escaped with my life. But not before I sank my dagger deep into my father's chest. That is why I left. And that's why I'll never go back. I can't freaking blame him. Like, 
to like desecrate the graves of your ancestors to that point you know like like the the whole like the spirituality of the place and like the actual physicality of the place and like any the last like last few laws they held sacred just destroyed and like one man's desire for war like not even power just war you know you must have family other than your father don't you miss them no now that I have my family's armor again, there's nothing left for me. So if you don't have his family armor by this point, he that this is when he brings up the armor quest. So long, Rex. Shepard. Shepard. Commander? What's your opinion of the last mission? You mean the Rachni, right? They were dangerous, Skipper. They proved that 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years? Oh, geez. I think geez. it was a mistake to let them go. But that wasn't my call to make. It, it was yours. If you haven't talked to Dr. Tassoni, you probably should. She just lost her mom. That has to hurt. Just saying, Skipper. No, I definitely did. And I think Ashley would probably go talk to her, too. If, if you know, if she could. Do you have a few minutes to talk? One-on-one? -on -one? Sure, if you have time. I figured you'd be busy with tactical briefings and whatnot. Don't know what I think about us attacking today, of all days. Kind of an ill omen. Eh? You mean on the anniversary of the first contact war? The end of it, yeah. My family always marks it. I'm the only Williams here. I guess you'd be the only other one interested in it. Seems like an odd thing to celebrate. That was 26 years ago. In our family, it's not really a celebration, more like an obligation. Don't tell me you don't know about my family. My commanders always find out. It's not in my files or something? There's almost nothing in your files. Technical scores and a list of crap assignments. There's a reason for the crap assignments. I'm General Williams' granddaughter, the commander of the Shanxi garrison in the war. The only human ever to surrender to an alien race. Eh, yeah, which is just... It's absolute garbage what's happening. What happened to her grandpa and what's happening to her. I see. That's why you drive yourself so hard. A Williams has to be better than the best, if only to avoid suspicion. That's what my dad told me the night before he retired. It takes a special kind of thick-headed to march into a job where your family's blacklisted. I did it anyway. I'm not gonna let our name go down with Arnold and Quisling. Granddad deserved better than that. Just, the whole, she'll explain it. It's just, it's it's absolute balderdash what happened. What happened to your grandfather after the war? He was relieved of command as soon as Shan Shi was liberated. They brought him back to Earth in irons, but there was never a trial. They quietly demoted him and stuck him behind a desk. He retired a year later and spent the rest of his life working construction in the colonies. Sometimes we hear about attempts to get him exonerated in some official way. Nothing ever comes of him. As I recall, your grandfather held out for a long time. The Turians wrecked the orbitals in the first wave and occupied the major cities. They sat in orbit, dropping rocks on anything that moved. Granddad dispersed the troops, but when they went into the cities for supplies, the Turians would wreck a block to eliminate one fire team. Civilians were dying, his troops were starving, and he couldn't contact Alliance High Command. So he surrendered the garrison. Like, what are you supposed to do? Yeah, like, civilians dying, troops are starving, and he can't contact his superiors. Like, what do you want the man to do? Just let everybody die? Like, he's, he's, you know, damned if you do, damned if you don't. If he had kept going, they would have been like, you monster, we can't believe you did that. They were also, can we just, uh, can we just recognize the fact that it was the first contact with aliens? Like, what did you want the man? There's no tactics in the book, necessarily. It sounds like he did the best he could. They also, they occupied the major cities and dropped orbital bombardments took out their own orbital stuff like and they're aliens <laughs> like for the first time we were fighting aliens like what nobody else could have done any better but they decided to use him as a scapegoat and to list her whole family like to blacklist her whole family for like that's just dumb like you know what i mean like i think it's really dumb like maybe you're like like immediate like uh like your your kids or something but she wasn't even like alive like when this was all going down, like, don't, don't blacklist, like, the grandkids on, you know, like, I don't know, it just seems stupid to make the kids pay for the sins of their, you know, sins, air quotes, in this situation, for the sins of their fathers, type thing. He refused to sacrifice his men just to save face for humanity. You planning to throw yourself on a sword to save face for him? 
Would it make a difference? He's gone now. Dad's gone too. And who would it impress? I'll never be good enough for the Alliance. So now you know. Gonna kick me off the ship, Skipper? What? You're a valuable part of my crew, Williams. If I want an opinion from the head, I go to Elenko. When I want one from the heart, I go to you. I also play a mean game of pool. <laughs> but anyway, I've got things to do before we land. I'm sure you do too. Oh, it's this kind of thing at the very, not the very end, but like towards the end of like the, you know, the conversational dialogue stuff that make me go, oh, like maybe I actually do, like, I don't know, like Ashley. It was that line in particular from Shepard that I heard, like I finally heard at some point because I was pretty strict with Ashley for a while. But when I take the more Paragon upper route one, where she's like, and it basically sums up uh, like Ashley and Caden very well, like an opinion from the head, like a well, you know, thought out, like methodical opinion, go to Caden. You want one from like a fiery, you know, passionate, intelligent woman, you go to Ashley. You know, well, she's intelligent, she's smart, she's but she's not like book smart, I guess. <laughs> you know, you want you want a fiery, passionate, you know heartfelt woman's opinion you go to Ashley you know so anyway that that helped put her in perspective for me dismissed chief so now ma'am it makes things difficult <laughs> commander good to see you you've been with CSEC a while have you seen much action wait well not as much as you yeah, oh, hey, hey, here we go, here we go, here we go. Garrus's quest. You have. Anything in particular that stands out? I remember this Solarian geneticist I was sent to investigate. That case was a bit disturbing. What happened? Why were you investigating him? I was tasked with tracking black market trade on the Citadel. Most of it harmless, nothing I needed to pursue. But during the course of my investigation, I noticed an increase in the trade of body parts. Organs, mostly. We usually get a few of those, but not the numbers I was seeing. We weren't sure if there was a new black market lab or if some freak was harvesting organs from citizens. Nah. You've seen this before on the Citadel? Every so often, some lab sells unwanted parts through the black market. But they're not as bad as the cyclones. I remember this one Elcor diplomat we caught in my first year on the job. He was hacking people up and selling their organs. Had the station in a bit of a panic. But this case wasn't that clear cut. Turns out there was more going on than we first realized. It's just, it's, it's, it's terrible, right? But it's also kind of hilarious. They have an L core going on a mad rampage. Not even a mad rampage. He obviously like was able to ki get away with killing people, and then selling their body parts for at least a little while. And you, you just picture an L core doing that. Like that L core must have really snapped. So how did you figure out what was happening? First, we got a hold of a sample and ran DNA tests. The weird thing was, the match led us to a Turian who was still alive and was very convinced he'd never lost his liver. After a bit of digging, I discovered this Turian worked briefly for Dr. Salion, the geneticist. So I went to his lab hoping to find evidence of cloned organ development. But there was nothing. No Salarian hearts, no Turian livers, not one Krogan testicle. Krogan testicle, huh? <laughs> <laughs> You're kidding, right? Why would anyone want Krogan testicles? Some Krogan believe that testicle transplants can increase their virility, counteract the effects of the genophage. It doesn't work, but that doesn't stop them from buying. They'll pay up to 10,000 credits each. That's 40,000 for a full set. <laughs> Somebody's making a killing out there. Uh, yeah, uh, th you heard that right. Uh, that math was correct. The Krogan have, they have four balls. So, uh, do, do with that. If you didn't, if you didn't know that, you're welcome. <laughs> What'd you do about the geneticist? I brought in some of his employees for interrogation to see if I could get them to talk. While I was interviewing one of them, I came across something suspicious. You mean threatening? Yeah, he's interviewing. Was that really necessary? Maybe, maybe not. Either way, it paid off. One of my detainees started bleeding profusely during the interview. We offered to patch him up, and he got frantic, freaked out. I ordered a full exam to find out what was going on. Our medics found incisions all over his body, some of them fresh. That was our big break. These people weren't just Dr. Salion's employees, they were test tubes. Walking, Freaky! Living test tubes. 
Freaky! They were growing the organs just randomly. He was growing parts inside these people? Exactly. He cloned their organs right inside their own bodies. Then he harvested them and sold them off. Most of the victims were poor. He'd pay them each a small percentage of the sales, but only if the organs were good. Sometimes an organ wouldn't grow properly, so he'd just leave it in. Most of them were a mess, but only on the inside, hidden so nobody could see. The problem with that is, is like, that's basically what cancer is. It's like when a cell that's like, or uh, yeah, like it's a cell, all right? Like, that's like a, like a liver cell, like starts growing and like, what is it? Like, produce, like, uh, not cloning, but like trying to grow a liver, like in your lungs. And that becomes lung cancer, you know, type thing. So, like, he's growing, like, I don't know, a liver in, like, your armpit or something. Like, how are they gonna fit? How are they gonna fit in there? I mean, let alone, like, I'm thinking human, but, like, anybody else. Like, I don't know. It's not like we have that much extra space inside us to put extra stuff, you know? Like, every piece is kind of used up, you know? <laughs> I hope he got what he deserved. That's the worst part. We never caught him. Why not? What the hell happened? He ran, blew his lab, grabbed some of his employees, and headed for the nearest space dock. By the time I found out, his ship was already leaving. He threatened to kill his hostages if we tried to stop him. But you went after him anyway, right? I ordered Citadel Defense to shoot him down, but CSEC headquarters countermanded my order. They were worried about the hostages, worried about civilian casualties, and the ship was destroyed so close to the Citadel. I told them those hostages were dead anyway. He just used them to make more organs. But they wouldn't listen. That's, uh, you couldn't... There's, you, you can't fire on them. You know, like, as frustrating as it is. like, you, And by this point in time, we have to have something that lets you, like... Uh, I don't think you do. It's more of a Star Wars-y thing. But, like, um... Uh, some sort of, like, EMP burst. Or, like, uh... Like a... Something that you can shoot at them, some sort of laser beam that like fries the electronics and stuff, you know? It's not worth the risk. You pursue yeah, the yeah, vessel yeah. and disable it. That's the best choice. They sent the military after him, but he got away just the same. Yes, they did. I went to Patton and told him what I thought of him and his policies. He said if I didn't like it, I could quit. Well, I almost did. All they had to do was disable that ship, stop him from running. Maybe the hostages die, maybe they don't, but at least we stopped the bastard responsible for it all. I mean, it is a tough choice. If you don't care about the fate of those hostages, then you're no better than he is. You're just a terrorist with a bad. Oh, snap! Yeah, maybe you're right. It doesn't make it any easier, but I see your point. Just wish I could have stopped him. That's like, I know he wants to get justice for the people who have died, you know, and to make sure this guy can't hurt anybody else in the future, but like... You can't, you can't be so cold like that, you know? Like, you gotta... Every person's life has to matter. And if you're gonna make the decision to sacrifice people to save others, like, you have to be... Like, I don't know, you like, you know, I, now I'm just, I'm thinking about Mass Effect 3 type thing. But, um, the decisions that have to be made in that game. Sacrifice a million to save, like, a billion, you know? Uh, it's just, it's rough. I don't know. Oh my gosh, we've gone way over time. Oh boy. Do you have any idea what happened to Dr. Salian? I sent out feelers from time to time, hoping to find something. I thought I'd found him a while back. He changed ships and changed his name to Dr. Ha <laughs> ha! joke, I guess. I told the military, but they weren't convinced it was him. I got the transponder frequency for his new ship, but I just can't get anyone to check it out. I'll check out the coordinates when I get a chance. I was hoping you'd say that. But Commander, take me with you when you go. If it's Saleon, I want to be there when you find him. Alright, need to end this one here. Oh boy, this has gone on a little bit long. Really quick, thank you so much to my patrons. Uh, Chris, oh, hang on, I'm getting your... <laughs> Scalamonger, thank you so much for being a patron. I had Sapling Patron. I appreciate it a lot. Thank you so much, uh, Reese Scalito, for being another Sapling Patron. Once again, thank you so, so much for, to both of you. And an extra special thank you to Christopher, who is, um, a tree. Uh, a tree... <laughs> He is a tree. Uh, tree patron. Thank you so much for your support. And thank you to everybody who's watched. And I hope to see you in the next one.